Item number SCP-3799 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures No access to Crozier Island is permitted for either staff or civilians. The Foundation currently enforces a no-fly zone around Crozier Island, and several Foundation craft patrol the perimeter for any unwanted intruders. Any unauthorized personnel, be they civilian or staff, attempting to enter are to be issued with the appropriate amnestics to erase any unusual knowledge or interest in SCP-3799. SCP-3799 is a perfect sphere composed entirely of snow and with a circumference of exactly 6 meters. SCP-3799 is suspended without visible means of support at a height of 500 meters above Crozier Island, Greenland. Crozier Island is the location of Site-799, a site devoted to experimental research. Contained within SCP-3799 is SCP-3799-1, the corpse of an adult male human wearing what appears to be an unknown variant of a Foundation uniform. SCP-3799-1's right arm protrudes out of SCP-3799 and was formerly holding a number of documents which have since been recovered. The cause of death of SCP-3799-1 is believed to have been from blood loss, apparently the result of self-inflicted wounds to the wrists. Scans of SCP-3799 show that it possesses an abnormally low Hume field. Attempts to penetrate or harm SCP-3799 or SCP-3799-1 have all resulted in failure. SCP-3799 first appeared on December 24, 1987, during an experiment in Site-799, forming part of Project The following documents are those recovered from SCP-3799-1. They are apparently five iterations of the file for SCP-3799, although no such iterations have ever been found in the Foundation's database. Because of the sensitive information contained in these documents, their contents are restricted to the O5 Council and specifically authorized personnel only. The information contained within these documents has caused Project Midwinter to be immediately discontinued, and the present containment measures to be implemented. Document 3799-1 Item Number SCP-3799 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures No access to Crozier Island is permitted for either staff or civilians, with the exception of the research team at Site-799. Several Foundation craft are to patrol the perimeter for any unwanted intruders. Any unauthorized personnel be they civilian or staff attempting to enter Crozier Island, are to be issued with the appropriate amnestics to erase any unusual knowledge or interest in SCP-3799. All members of the research team at Site-799 are to remain within Site-799. Food and other necessary supplies are to be delivered to them remotely. Members of the research team are only to be allowed to remain on site for two months in any one stretch and must take a holiday of at least one month in an area with low precipitation before being allowed to return to active duty. Any personnel exhibiting cognitohazardous symptoms thought to originate from prolonged exposure to SCP-3799-1 are to be quarantined and removed from Site-799 immediately. SCP-3799 is a meteorological phenomenon affecting Crozier Island, Greenland. The island and an area stretching 0.5 km away from it are perpetually undergoing precipitation of a substance identical to snow on a molecular level, but which displays significant anomalous properties. This substance is known as SCP-3799-1. SCP-3799-1 contains a significant cognitohazardous effect to individuals in the immediate vicinity of large quantities of SCP-3799-1 or who observe SCP-3799-1 for long periods of time. The cognitohazard causes the affected subjects to develop an obsessive interest in the substance, apparently attributing to it feelings of intense joy, contentment, and enlightenment. There is currently no known way to counteract these effects. The effect does not fade over time, and in some subjects appears to have intensified. Research into a cure is ongoing. 
SCP-3799 first appeared on December 24, 1987, during an experiment in Site-799, forming part of Project. Fourteen people were affected by SCP-3799-1 before workable containment procedures were implemented. Currently, Site-799 is to be used only for research on the SCP-3799, as well as possible ways to counter its effects. The current project lead is Dr. Simon Kells, a specialist in cognitohazardous anomalies. Addendum 3799-1 On February 8, 1991, Researchers at Site-799 reported that three personnel had gone missing since the events of December 24, 1987. It should be noted that the area of SCP-3799's effect has increased by three meters since that time. Document 3799-2 Item Number SCP-3799 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Site-799 is to be evacuated as soon as possible, as there is no known way to prevent SCP-3799 and SCP-3799-1 is apparently impermeable. Effective containment is presently impossible. Foundation vessels are to patrol around SCP-3799's area of effect at a distance of 3 km. Beyond personnel involved in the evacuation of Site-799, no personnel are to be allowed access to SCP-3799's area of effect. All members of the research team at Site-799 are to remain within Site-799. They are not to leave under any circumstances prior to the evacuation. Food and other necessary supplies are to be delivered to them remotely. Any personnel exhibiting cognitohazardous symptoms thought to originate from prolonged exposure to SCP-3799-1 are to be quarantined immediately. Several samples of SCP-3799-1 have been taken to Site-3150. Personnel are not to make direct skin contact with SCP-3799-1. All personnel must wear standard-issued hazmat suits if they wish to perform experiments involving SCP-3799-1. Description SCP-3799 is a meteorological phenomenon affecting an area of approximately 6 km squared, centered around Crozier Island, Greenland. This area is perpetually undergoing precipitation of a substance identical to snow on a molecular level, but which displays significant anomalous properties. This substance is known as SCP-3799-1. SCP-3799-1 contains a significant cognitohazardous effect to individuals in the immediate vicinity of large quantities of SCP-3799-1, or who observe SCP-3799-1 for long periods of time. The cognitohazard causes the affected subjects to develop an obsessive interest in the substance, apparently attributing to it feelings of intense joy, contentment, and enlightenment. This leads to an eventual belief that activating SCP-3799-1's corrosive properties see below, will result in a form of transcendence, or a destruction of lower functions. The meaning of these statements is rather ambiguous and vague, with affected subjects unwilling to discuss them further. There is currently no known way to counteract these effects. The effect does not fade over time, but rather intensifies in all subjects over extended period. Research into a cure is ongoing, but it has been found that inflicting extreme pain and or blood loss does have a delaying effect on the intensification of the cognitohazard. SCP-3799-1 possesses a corrosive property if it comes into contact with human cadavers. It gradually converts the cadaver into SCP-3799-1 by altering the subject on a molecular level. Subjects affected by SCP-3799-1's effects will feel compelled to immerse themselves in SCP-3799-1 within 48 hours of first developing symptoms, in order to expire through hypothermia and thus activate its effects. SCP-3799 first appeared on December 24, 1928, prompting the conversion of the long-abandoned Site-799 into a dedicated site for researching SCP-3799. 
SCP-3799's area of effect initially increased at a rate of 1 meter squared for every individual who expired due to contact with SCP-3799-1, but since 1952, it has been increasing at a rate of 1 km per expiration. Due to discrepancies in the documentation pertaining to Site-799, it is believed that currently. Site-799 is to be used only for research on the SCP-3799, as well as possible ways to counter its effects. The current project lead is Dr. Simon Kells, a specialist in cognitohazardous anomalies. Addendum 3799-1 As of September 23, 2017, SCP-3799's area of effect appears to be increasing without a need for further human matter. The anomaly has been reclassified as Keter. Document 3799-3 Item Number Snow Object Class Pure and Free Special Containment Procedures In the spring, there is dew and water and little biting crawlers, oozing from the small places to feed and bite and eat. In the summer, there is sweat and roots and grass and seething things, the sun burning and melting the living down below, matter drying and dying. In the autumn, there is death and rot, the leaves and trees and plants decaying, the trees collapsing, the fruits bursting, pustules bleeding their sustenance into the baying, starving hordes below. In the winter, there is only purity. The world is frozen, its forms filled and made whole. Snow must not contain the others. It must change. It must alter. It must make pure. Description. You cannot see the snow, can you? Not really. You just see it as a bunch of frozen ice crystals, crystalline structures made through a combination of molecules on molecules, which settle on the tops of houses and on the tops of trees. But those of us here at Site-799 know better. Site-799 knows that the snow is something more. The snow is pure. The snow is perfect. Look at that blizzard up at the top of the page. Examine it. There is no blood on it, no mire. It is a perfect combination of light and crystal, reflections over reflections over reflections. Look at what it does to the buildings, to the pylon, their differences and failings smoothed over, replaced by more whole variants. The world is run by symmetry. Humans are not pure. We are composed of fetid clay and seething blood, born of mire, flowing with mud and grit through our fleshy veins. Pieces of frail tissue expanding and contracting in viscous ecstasy, constantly swinging between extremes of pain and pleasure. We are complexities whose beauty is buried under layers of worn matter, frail pieces of impure skin strung together with bone and ligaments. The last of us are holed up in here. We tried to resist, but it was pointless. And I see now that there was no point. We can step into the snow. We can see the light as it should have been. Our higher functions will be given to it. Our baser forms will be reused as fuel, substance, matter. We shall be reborn as light and sound, a golden bird upon a bow. The eightfold walls of Timur's tomb, representing perfect cosmic order, not made of sand and stone and cobalt, but of the intangible shapes and color of higher forms. Snow is perfection. Snow is a rejection of life and all of its excuses and petty reasoning. Snow is true and objective and unconcerned. It's time now, to walk into the fields of white and into my destiny. I am the last one. I resisted this nirvana, and like a bodhisattva, I stay behind to instruct others. Come, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, feed it and remove the need for feeding. I am going outside now, and may be some time. Document 3799-4 Item Number SCF-3799 Object Class Blizzard Special Containment Procedures SCF-3799 is currently uncontainable. The primary purpose of the Snow Containment Foundation is to prevent SCF-3799 from expanding further and to find a method of neutralization. To that end, a total of 54 sites spread across all three SCF-administered zones, Tibet, Uyghuristan, and Davistan, have been established to perform research related to SCF-3799. 
Description: SEF-3799 is a blizzard which presently covers 28% of the world's surface. This blizzard is composed of a form of snow known as SCF-3799-1. SCF-3799-1 contains a significant cognitohazardous effect to individuals exposed to it. Exposure is defined as being in the vicinity of large quantities of SCF-3799-1, or observing SCF-3799-1 for long periods of time. The cognitohazard causes the affected subjects to develop a religious interest in SCF-3799-1, eventually worshipping it as divinely bestowed matter which will allow the individual to transcend earthly bonds. The only known way to counteract this cognitohazardous effect is through the infliction of severe pain or extreme blood loss. However, these techniques only cause a delaying effect and can never entirely erase the cognitohazard. SCF-3799-1 possesses a corrosive property if it comes into contact with human cadavers. It gradually converts the cadaver into SCF-3799-1 by altering the subject on a molecular level. Subjects affected by SCF-3799-1's cognitohazardous effects, usually within 48 hours of first displaying symptoms of cognitohazardous infection, feel compelled to immerse themselves in SCF-3799-1 displaying great enthusiasm about expiring from hypothermia and activating SCF-3799-1's effects. The source of SCF-3799 is unknown. The date of SCF-3799's initial manifestation is unknown, but it is believed to have occurred well before the evolution of modern humans. It is believed that the origin of SCF-3799 was located on a world island located off the northwestern coast of the Danish colony of Eiriksland. Owing to its particular religious significance to cultures across the globe, the world island is not claimed by any governmental body as territory. Until 1950, the SCF Site-799 was established on the world island for the purposes of studying and containing SCF-3799. It is unknown when or why Site-799 was originally established but it is believed to have existed well before extant records began in 1802. As is common knowledge, SCF-3799 is the focal point for the vast majority of the world's religions, particularly Aspirianity and the Cult of the White Prophet. Knowledge of SCF-3799 is public, and large numbers of religious groups have been sacrificing individuals to SCF-3799 since time immemorial. As is commonly known, Virtually all political and economic developments in human history have been centered around SCF-3799 and ways to best provide enough fuel for its continued growth. Despite often contradictory evidence, it is believed that SCF-3799 significantly altered the timeline of human history. This is due to several unexplained elements of world history, including but not limited to the lack of any cultural exchange between the indigenous peoples of the Americas and those of Afro-Eurasia, despite many centuries of both groups visiting the world island for religious purposes. The continued existence of the Davite civilization, despite ample documentation describing its downfall. It is believed that SCF-3799's anomalous effects helped mitigate the strength of the Davite's potential rivals. The tribes of Croatia in particular are known to have had their manpower depleted many times by sacrifices to SCF-3799. Why Site-799 is named thus, despite it being the oldest SCF base by many centuries. The existence of the 33 anomalies currently contained by the Snow Containment Foundation, despite the containment of SCF-3799 having always been its sole mission. The existence of the Snow Containment Foundation itself, as there are no records of any individuals opposed to SCF-3799's existence, or who have demonstrated anything other than total devotion to SCF-3799. Several documents refer to an SCP Foundation, despite no such organization ever having existed. The continued existence of the human race, given the number of individuals thought to have expired with an SCF-3799 over the last 5,000 years. It is believed that the Snow Containment Foundation's files on SCF-3799 have been tampered with multiple times due to individuals affected by SCF-3799-1. Addendum 3799-1 On June 14, 2017, 
Snow containment foundation researchers detected a large energy signature, from a point exactly 500 meters above the former Site-799. Because of the apparent changes in the timeline caused by SCF-3799, it is theorized that Addendum 3799-2 Why are we even trying? It's up to 44% now, and it's only been a few weeks. How did this thing start? When did it start? What are we even still doing alive? Maybe we should just give up, walk outside, freeze ourselves. Maybe that is our only purpose, to become fuel. Addendum 3799-3 I don't think there are many of us left. There's only Site-112 and Site-3150 now. One of those houses small aircraft, and the other one is where I am, and everyone else here has walked outside. I don't understand what I'm reading. I don't know what any of these people and civilizations are. The human race has been contained within the sites forever. That's all there's ever been, the snowfall and the foundation. What does this all mean? Document 3799-5 this was the final document recovered from SCP-3799-1. Based on the contents, it is believed to have been written by SCP-3799-1 himself during the final hours of his life. Item number, fucked if I can remember. Object class, a polyon or blizzard or white, I don't even know anymore. Special Containment Procedures We're trying to stop it, and we think we know how. Description. So it won't sodding stop. We tried everything. We tried sacrifice and ritual and setting things on it and they all died. We got nothing left, but we worked it out in the end, and now I am on the way to fix it. There's this point that's miles and miles up, and it's where this comes from. It's got some weird time shit in it. That's what the idiot Kells and its mates keep doing in some old reality, and now it exists everywhere. It's an idea. An idea they made that's eating up the present and the past and everything, changing it, changing history, making everything boring and uniform and oh so fucking pretentious. And it was us who did this shit. We made it. They were trying to get rid of all the anomalies that ever were, to stop the world dying a new death every other day, have some quiet days back. But it didn't work. This is what Kells did. All that time we turned a blind eye to him. They wanted a world where they didn't have to work for their supper. They wanted purity, and they got purity. Fuck it. I haven't got a fucking clue what was real before. All I know is that it didn't work. Because that's not what life is. We're made of blood and mire and fucking and the sweet taste of wine. The scent of wheat and fields back home. Life. This thing isn't life. This thing is free of our useless imperfections. Some robot thing using our heads to create its pretentious fucking beauty. It can't write a poem, cause it thinks art is all imagery and airy-fairy fuckery. Art is life. Shakespeare grew hops for fuck's sakes. We live and we die and we glory in that fucking creation, and this thing wants to take all that and chop it up and make it into a bunch of straight lines and calculus. Well fuck that. I'm going into it. Into its source where it first came from. I'm going to bleed myself into its belly and stopping from having ever worked. I'm going to pilot this craft into the hardest thing, covering my eyes and skin, and then when I'm right in the belly I'll cut myself and give it what it hates. Blood. Life stuff. Full of fuel and waste. It'll hate that. It hates blood and mire. It won't be able to cope. All the changes, all the shit it's done in time and space will be cut off at the source. This is my last testament. I've got all the copies of this thing, all the iterations gathered up. I reached into the archives, into the places where the snow hadn't done its job properly, and took these ghosts. These voices of what once was, and now never was. I'll take them with me, and if I survive the CK-class shit, maybe someone will find them. The world that was. The world that those fuckers created. Remember us.